Sentinels out. Back to back losses. Hundred Thieves out. Cloud Nine on the ropes. What has happened to North America in this LCQ, Sean? That's a good question. I was really, really hoping that the form of the other NA teams would be good. Uh, when 100, because when 100 Thieves lost, like I had heard pretty good things about them uh, from behind the scenes, like their scrims were going well. So I was like, oh, but I also obviously heard Sentinels was playing Yeah, well. Sentinels were, apparently yeah. the scrim bucks were saying Sentinels were crushing it. Yeah. So we could put a whole lot of stock in there, as I believe. Yeah. So when Sentinels won that series, I, I had a lot of faith in them. Or whoever won the Cloud9 Sentinel series, kind of like running the lower bracket. And to be where we're at now, <laughs> I can't believe it. Like, honestly... Uh, based on what we saw in the regular season and what we knew coming into LCQ, you know, like my big thing was like, okay, Furia was my other contender and Quick wasn't playing. And just the fact that like they're playing with a new lineup, maybe not a lot of cohesion there. I didn't expect them to make a deep run, but I certainly didn't expect them to lose to Crew. And obviously Crew was 0-9 in the regular season. There's no reason for me to expect them to make a run. And then MIBR is also playing with a six. There's no reason for me to think they're going to make a run. And Leviathan was like kind of like the wild card for me. Like, I was like, everyone always says these guys are insane in practice. Mm -hmm. And I kind of ignored it uh, because I was hearing it again. And I, after I saw what crew did to them, I was like, okay, Leviathan are going to get bodied in lowers like they're just they're done like they're done and for them to just two o sentinels in the way they did i it was pretty dominant i i mean dude i'm gonna let you know like behind the scenes it was six two i think even like sideshow during a timeout was like why did leviathan pick this map and we were literally saying the same things we were like why did leviathan pick this map like sentinels looked so insane on this yesterday Six to two in a double duelist fracture comp rod where the duelists were one and nine, which is what Taco was, I believe, and two and ten, which is what King was. And yet they ended that half six to six. How the f how is that possible? Yeah, I think like when it was 6-2, they got a little bit loose. And uh, I think Leviathan took a little bit of an advantage of that, honestly. And they won a couple big swing rounds towards the end of the first half. And then when we switched halves, you know, and Leviathan won that, that pistol mm -hmm. that really kicked things off. There was like no rounds where Sentinels really were super competitive. They like won the bonus... I don't remember what round 20 even was. It might have been like a thrifty or some, some like weird buy. But if you look at the stats from their attack of Fracture Rod, Saucy is 2 and 7, Marv is 1 and 10, and Zekin is 2 and 10. Like there is like no production like across the board, despite even the fact that they won, you know, two rounds combining for like 5 and 27 between three players like that. When we saw what Saucy did yesterday on Fracture, uh, it just wasn't a good day for Sentinels. Like, honestly, it just, they didn't look like themselves, despite the fact that they started off looking so hot. Like, I don't know. It's like once Leviathan started, Leviathan started, like, fighting back, they looked incredible. Like, they started doing, like, all kind of, like, bait setups. Like, Shy was, like, baiting perfectly for Taco, who was, like, top gen, like, spraying through, like, a canteen smoke with, like, a, a turret in front of him and stuff. And no one clears top gen. Then Taco gets a 4K. And once Taco came to life in this series, it was really, really difficult at that point, at that moment for Sentinels to do anything. I feel like that happened towards the end of Fracture. And then going into Split, he had a couple, like, really big pop-off rounds. And 
we hadn't it, seen it, that. It soccer. felt like they they crumbled going into split. Like especially yeah. losing that second round eco, yes. the mental must have just disintegrated. Yeah. Uh, you you cannot at that level lose a second round eco unless the, the other team is forcing. It, you, it is just unconscionable, and you can see the run that um. Leviathan went on. The only round Sentinels won were thrifties. They won like three, three, three thrifties. Um, you know, in, in that first half, it just, you can't do that. It, it really felt like the end of Fracture bled into like the opening of Split, and then it was just not possible for them to, to make a, a comeback. I totally agree. That second round really took the wind out of the sails, right? Like, I was honestly a believer after they won pistol. I was like, oh, what a great start. Like everything's going well. And I mean, I broke down the second round, I think at like halftime of that Beautiful, game. Beautiful, by the way, Sean. Beautiful. Loved it. Perfect breakdown. Everyone in chat is like, God, Sean is so smart and hot and beautiful. It was it was great. I know you went over time. No that. Yeah. I know you went over time. Oh, yes, they did. It was a lot of me typing, but we <laughs> did. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Rod. Thank you. Of defending course. me into you a know shot. of but, course yeah it was it was a rough series for sentinels and like i think they lost that second round and i don't know they just could never recover like again it was like just a very very poor attack half it was kind of like uninspiring they got gave up quite a few first bloods you know in that half it was they were two and ten on first bloods on their attack half so even the rounds they won, you know, they were probably coming from behind in those rounds. And that's just not good enough. Like, and Honestly, a double the score score. could have been worse. It could have been like 13 to 2 or 13 to 1 because Sentinels won like two or three thrifties himself. So it really felt like, you know, after the second round, the series is pretty much done. And their season was pretty much done. Yeah. I mean, honestly, though, like Leviathan looked ridiculous in this series. Like, and that's where it gets so weird because while Cruz stomped Leviathan, like the way Leviathan played here in this series, I'm like, ooh, are they playing with that like I don't give a fuck attitude now? And you know, like I watch the players like swinging for fights. King is just dominating people. Taco looks like he has confidence again. Nasware always looks really, really solid when I watch him, but Shy was the player. Like honestly, this guy is stepping the f up. Whenever I watch him, he's the one that has like these like swing round moments where he comes up really big in like super key moments of the game. And you never really notice him on the scoreboard after like I'm looking at the scoreboard right now. He's like, you know, 10 and 11 on the sky on split. But I vividly remember him holding down. I believe it was like one of the first guns on split in the A site behind sign where he gets like a 4K. He's never, like, making plays is the problem. So, like, he'll never be at the top of the scoreboard. He's securing rounds by, like, playing really smart. And, God, has he, like, closed out some really key moments here in LCQ for them. Yeah, I mean, I re probably, uh, you know, the crew and Leviathan players, all the Chilean players have been playing with each other or against each other from the very beginning of the beta of the game. So those two teams have such in-depth knowledge of each other. That I'm going to assume that, like, considering the Leviathan versus Sentinels match, that even though Crew kind of stomped Leviathan, it's probably more of a matchup issue than it is, like, given the current form of each team. Yeah. Yeah. They I, played I, against each other so many times. They know each other's tendencies so well. They've been previous. They've been f former teammates of each other. Um, I feel like that is a lot more to play than, like, just Leviathan. Maybe they just underperformed, too. In the previous series maybe maybe you're right like honestly i did we did mention that before and the teams have scrimmed each other a lot there's no one to scrim against right now right there's you might be able to catch a couple of scrims against the champions teams that are from vct americas some of those teams went home to the like respective regions uh for a little bit of a break and some of them you know just aren't scrimming on certain days but then so you mostly have to scream against other lcq teams and once teams are eliminated from LCQ, it's even harder to find scrims, right? Because there's not much of a tier two scene right now. The Ascension tournament's over, Challengers is over, uh, tier three scene. I can tell you from experience scrimming against like a tier three team, it is practice, 
but is it like efficient and effective practice? It is very difficult to get like a lot of value out of those scrims. Like, because a lot of the things you're doing, you're like, man, like we can't really do the things we would do against a really good team in a match because they're not going to play that way. And we also don't really know if like our holds are very effective, like how we're holding, because they're also not as mechanically skilled at punishing them. So it's very hard to really get like true value. And you have to have players that can like understand, like, you know, like after every round, like did we win that round based on skill or do we win that, win that round based on like strategy? And so you have to do that for every loss, every death. And it's, it's way harder to find effective practice again right now for any of these teams. I'm sh I'm certain of it. What happened to your boys? <laughs> so we, so we talk about how disappointing Sentinels have been, but even they were able to beat a hundred thieves. Mm. So that does not make a hundred thieves look good at all, considering Sentinels lost back to back matches directly after. What? Yeah, what's going on over there, or well, how do you, how do you feel? I definitely feel like super bummed. Like I'm not gonna lie. Like uh, I feel like a a pretty close co connection. Obviously, it's like all the players, right? I, like was pretty pivotal in building the team, and I coached them. And I was around them a lot, and they're all great kids. Like honestly, I uh, <laughs> they're like the sweetest people like I've ever met. They're so kind. Like everyone on that team. Uh, and just to see like how the community obviously reacts when they lose is, is painful. Like I couldn't even stomach reading like the match thread. Like it was just like, oh, I just felt so bad for them on so many levels. Uh, they did not play well. Like, uh, I'm not going to like sugarcoat it. I think the moment might've got to them. There's a lot of mistakes they made in that series. Uh, I, I kind of broke down a couple of the games right after they had I also I co-streamed them live and then after the day I went back and like rewatched them uh and kind of broke them down further. And there's just a lot of like panicky decisions that um yeah, like the moment might have got to them. And that's kind of like what I said before the series, right? Like I trust Sentinels more in those moments and Listen to some interviews of like Stellar afterwards. They had never played a Yoru. They had never played one on Bind. So like how insane is that? That they just never have played one. And their Bind is apparently insane in their practice, right? Like it was going really well for them. Uh, and all of a sudden here on match day, they play their first Yoru. Like that is just an awful feeling like i'm not gonna lie it happened to me once when i was coaching 100 thieves where we were in like a sage comp on haven and phase like mirror comped us and we literally were beating every single team on haven in practice but every other team wasn't running our mirror comp it was the only time we had ever played our comp and they beat us because like it's a little bit different when you're playing you know like a team that knows like a lot of the tricks and the limitations of the comp uh, like I actually think the things that 100 Thieves did in that bind game were quite good. It's just they made a lot of mistakes along the way. Um, yeah, yeah, it really sucks. Uh, I don't, I don't really know what else to say. Like, I just, didn't, I don't think they are as bad as that result showed. Yeah. But I also don't really have a lot of faith if they would have like made it through based on what I saw and what I've seen happen to Sentinels. So like, I don't really have like a lot of cope in me or like, I'm not gonna like try to spin some weird thing right now. It was just sad, you know, it just didn't feel good. I mean, I wish I could say that I had the same optimism as you, but considering your pickums and <laughs> and my pickums as well, what happened to both 100 Thieves and Sentinels was really, it went as expected. I thought Sentinels would win the first series, and then I thought that they were going to lose back-to-back -back series, and that both teams were going to be going home and have their seasons end early. And now it's, where do these organizations go from here? Last week, we speculated on the potential, you know, moves that both teams could make, um, you know, 
spurned by Ye uh, and his comments about who's going to get fired. So we thought we, some speculation about who that was going to be. I want to know if if anything in the in this series changed your mind on what we thought. For me, I mean, the biggest criticism that I saw online was, you know, my takes about tens. Um, I actually thought tens played pretty well. I, I think that of all of the agents besides Jet that he can play, Ko definitely fits his play style the best. My issue with him has always been versatility in the agents that he is not able to play. I never really liked him on Rays. I never really thought that Sage was um, very good for him. But I think that, you know, having him on a KO initiator really plays to his strengths. And I think he ended up getting like 20 assists multiple times. He really did play well, yeah. not just in terms of the fragging power, but setting up his teammates um, and, you know, uh, utilizing his utility to, to really play what's best for the team. And I think of all the different options that he could have, it, it he is not the reason that they lost this series. And I want to make that very clear. I still think that, you know, versatility was an issue, but it's definitely, that wasn't the issue for um, this series. So before I give kind of like my thoughts afterwards or anything was different, do you feel like what you saw happen um, this past weekend was going to change anything that from what you've said before? Uh, well, I, I agree with what you said. I, I think Tens looks so good on like KO. And I thought his Yoru was insane, what he did mm -hmm. to 100 Thieves. Uh, which obviously is like a really good sign for someone like Tense, who already we know he has like an insane jet. Uh, so I think the true problem with Sentinels was like a real lack of cohesion and depth when I watched them. Like they didn't have a lot of like stuff to fall back on. Like their mid rounding was incredible. Like when I would watch like Saucy and Pencada on like Fracture when like the round broke down and they were like out of a play or I'd watch like Marv like kind of running around and he had like an alt planned. I almost broke down like a round on Fracture where he had like this alt like plan uh, and they did it in the first game where like if you take a main, the cam sees you, they fault line, they brimmel. But then they like kind of went off of it and mid rounded. He used his alt on like arcade and they were very quick to do those type of plays but there wasn't a lot of like like power in their openings of rounds a lot of times uh and like a lot of like pre-planned out thoughts to really just be like powerful as fuck with those players like honestly just like wolf packing somewhere with like some aggression i never really saw a lot of that and i think it just goes to like the comfort of the players and just the stylist that clash between say like the brazilian players on the team that came from loud and they have a very strategic and tactical style into like marv who played under fns and had like a similar style into like tens and zekin who are a little bit more like poppy and aggressive i would say um and i think like you know having marv and pancada some of like the best controllers on your team but one of them is gonna have to sacrifice it's they're great players, but I just don't think, like, the pieces of this puzzle worked out for them very well. I still think, like, what we said last time is a pretty high likelihood. Like, these these Brazilian players going back into, like, another Brazilian team or some kind of other project. Uh, and it's not to say, like, they're not Tier 1 players. I actually think... I know they are. After, like, what I wa watched them do, like, in a lot of these mid-rounds... Um, but, like, this iteration of the team, like, clearly didn't gel the way it could have and should have, maybe, uh, based on, like, the skill. Like, the players individually are insane, but the pieces of this puzzle don't work together.